Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this accidental discovery of what seems to be another major collision between two satellites that nobody really talked about. Mostly because it was a military satellite and a spy satellite. But the collision did create quite a lot of debris and potentially moved us a little bit closer to what's known as the Kessler Syndrome. The premise behind the movie Gravity, where suddenly we reach the point where there is so much debris where everything starts to collide with one another and everything creates even more debris, eventually making space completely inaccessible to humans. Something that might sound like science fiction, but something that ESA takes really seriously. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to check out some of the links in the description that talk about some of the predictions they've made in regards to the potential amount of debris that we're going to be dealing with in just a few decades. And in short, it looks pretty bad. But anyway, first of all, I did not actually expect to make a video about Kessler syndrome or about satellites colliding with other satellites for at least another year. Mostly because there was a video very recently about a collision of an object with the International Space Station. The video that was just released a few months ago and the video where I already covered a lot of these topics. But the fact that I'm making another video on Kessler syndrome and the collision between two objects only a few months later is actually a pretty bad sign. It's actually the sign that the Kessler syndrome might have already started. But let's not rush things and let's actually discuss this in more detail. First of all, this website right here, Stuff in Space, is a perfect site to explore the orbits of various satellites, but also orbits of various types of debris. For example, here is what the orbits of the debris from Iridium-33 look like. This is of course from that very famous collision from 2009 between two satellites, one telecommunication and one abandoned military satellite. And this was, to date, the most explosive collision producing the most debris in space. It created nearly 2000 trackable pieces and quite a lot of untrackable pieces as well, with many of them being too small to be detected. This graph right here shows you the spatial density or the number of objects depending on the altitude. And notice how this right here, around 700 to 800 kilometers, represents the most dense region with a lot of different particles, with most of them being produced by that one collision. But the only reason we even know about this collision is because the satellite collided with a telecommunication satellite of a private company, which obviously reported this pretty much right away. But not all collisions are reported, especially because some of them involve secret satellites or military satellites. And it just so happens that the one that just happened a few months ago was between a military satellite and a spy satellite from two different countries. The countries that are not actually known for reporting anything anyway, Russia and China. And all of this was discovered by this wonderful person, Jonathan McDowell, who always has a lot of interesting stuff on Twitter. And so he tweeted about this and discovered this unusual comment in one of the trackable objects. This particular comment was in reference to one of the new objects and it basically just said collided with a satellite. And it looked like the trackable object, object known as 48078, represented some sort of a space junk or some sort of a debris from something that collided with something else. But Dr. McDowell was not happy with this explanation. He wanted to find out exactly what collided with what. And so by using the orbital parameters, he was able to establish exactly when this happened and more importantly was able to identify the exact culprits behind the collision. And it looks like all this relates to the tweet from March of 2021 by US Space Force that mentions a mysterious breakup of a Chinese satellite known as Yunhai-1-02. The satellite that probably looks something like this, that was mysteriously reported to have fallen apart after only two years of operation. So basically it started tumbling and a lot of pieces started to come out, out of it. Naturally, China did not report anything about this, and so it wasn't really unclear what happened to the satellite, but it was assumed to be some sort of a failure, or possibly maybe even some sort of explosion of fuel on board the satellite. In other words, it was assumed to be an internal problem. At the same time, that strange object, object known as 48078, only had a single measurement of its orbital parameters, and it was only detected back in March of 2021, specifically with that comment about potential collision with something. And so naturally, two things sort of correlated. You had the collision or unusual tumbling of the Chinese satellite and the detection of a new object that seemed to have been a satellite collision. But it was really after the orbital calculations that all of this made sense. In March of 2021, Yunhai-1-02 satellite passed extremely close to that orbital piece. 
implying that they definitely collided. Now obviously this is just a correlation, but it's a pretty strong correlation. And since then, this is what the satellite produced in terms of debris. So notice how there are already quite a lot of trackable pieces and it's slowly expanding even more. Currently there are 37 pieces of the satellite being tracked, with many pieces that are just too small to be tracked still invisible to us. Interestingly enough, despite the collision, the satellite actually sort of survived. As a matter of fact, signals from the satellite have been detected by amateur astronomers and amateur radio trackers and are even detectable right now. But since nobody really knows what its official mission is and what it's supposed to do, we don't really know if China still uses it. But what about the other piece? Where did that piece come from? Well, the analysis further suggested that it probably came from the Zenit 2 rocket, the Ukrainian rocket that back in 1996 launched a Russian satellite known as Tselina-2. And from what's known about Tselina satellites, they're essentially radio spy satellites. They try to triangulate the location of radio signals on the planet and they're used as a kind of a space surveillance system for radio transmissions. Because of this, obviously, this is a secret mission and Russia did not talk about it or about the potential collision. But the debris is approximately 25 years old, so this was orbiting around our planet for 25 years and it finally hit something. But because this was a much smaller debris, it didn't destroy the satellite completely, but did create quite a lot of additional debris. Which, by the way, is exactly what Kessler syndrome is. Debris creating even more debris that then creates even more debris. But it's also believed that this object, known as 48078, could have been just a piece of the Zenit 2 rocket that actually collided with something else. And so this is basically the second step of the Kessler syndrome, where a piece of a debris creates more debris. Now, obviously, it's not really exponential yet, just like in the movie Gravity, but it looks like we're slowly getting there. And the way that it essentially works with satellites in orbit is that for every 10 satellites you have in a certain orbit, the chance for collisions increases by about a hundredfold. Which means that in just a few years, the chance for collisions is going to increase a lot. And unfortunately, the private companies in this case are really not helping the situation. You might have already heard about the near collision of SpaceX's Starlink satellite with a private satellite um, a few years ago, and that particular situation has not improved at all. The recent calculations suggest that as Starlink satellites increase in numbers, the number of potential collisions is actually going to increase exponentially. A lot of these calculations have been done by Professor Hugh Lewis right here, and he's done a pretty good job at warning us about what all of this is going to cause. Apparently in the last year, approximately 50% of all near collisions involved SpaceX's satellites. There are about 1700 of them in orbit right now. But they eventually expect to have about 12,000 of them orbiting around planet Earth, suggesting that 90% of all near collisions are going to be with SpaceX. And unfortunately, from what we learned in 2019, SpaceX is not really good at communicating their intentions or at initiating the avoidance maneuvers necessary to prevent these collisions. As a matter of fact, they rarely publish their maneuvers or what they expect to do with various satellites which is, I guess, the nature of private businesses, but it also affects a lot of other businesses and a lot of other organizations in the world. Not to mention that Amazon wants to get into this business as well and possibly some other companies. So with thousands of private satellites that are somewhat difficult to predict orbiting our planet, the Kessler syndrome is only going to become a reality much, much sooner, eventually turning the orbit of our planet into a junkyard where nothing can actually survive for more than a few hours or basically ending our dream of space exploration and our dream of somehow using space technology for the betterment of humanity. Something that I'm sure nobody anticipated when the first satellite, Sputnik, was launched back in 1957. And so it's not really clear where all of this goes just yet, but at the moment things are definitely not getting better. More and more collisions are expected and it looks like I'll be making another video about Kessler syndrome and about a new collision probably before the end of this year which is a little bit unnerving. And like I said in the previous video, I'm sure it's great to have fast internet and satellite internet, but is it really worth it? Are we ready to abandon our dream of space exploration just to have the convenience of a slightly faster download? In my opinion, it's not worth it. But, I mean, that's just me. Anyway, on that note, we'll come back and probably talk more about this relatively soon. You can find all the relevant links in the description below, Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to read about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.